Oh, man. That was great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, Benny Greb. Welcome to Drumio, officially. Welcome to Drumio. It's, it's uh, awesome to have you here. Um, for those of you that don't know Benny Greb, he's from Hamburg, Germany. And he actually came all the way to Canada just to do this lesson for all of you. So we're very, very grateful to have him here with us today. Um, you recently launched your new DVD called The Art and Science of Groove. I don't know if we can get it. Maybe you can give him a close-up on that camera over there. Here we go. Let's there we that. go. The Art and Science of Groove. This is available at bennygreb.com. You can actually get a digital download or you can get the DVD um, shipped to you as well. I've actually got the digital download. It's great. Thank you very yeah. much. Quick, easy to download, so don't worry about any of that. Um, you're also doing your, ma your Benny Grab Master Sessions, which happen in Germany, as well as in New York and different locations right. throughout the United States. Um, I actually went to one of them in New York, and it was more of a broad, you talked about a little bit about everything. Yes. Some of the topics like this, you talked about some of the language of drumming stuff. Right. Um, and then the, the camps in Germany are more deep going into one specific subject. Right, I call them focus camps in Germany, and uh, more of the round camps are around the world. Awesome. Then he also has many different groups that you play with, but some of your personal projects are uh, Moving Parts, which uh, you just released an album. Uh, you played a lot of jazz festivals recently, and out of those festivals, you're going to be releasing an album. Right, so we recorded the last tour, and that will hopefully come out like end of the year. Something like okay. That. Cool. Uh, then you got the brass band, which the, the song you just played there was from Brass right. Band. It's called Next Question. Right. Right. And that was in 2006, 2007? Ooh, I don't remember. I think but that's yeah. 2006. Maybe. Yeah, it could be. Or maybe that's, maybe that's Greb Fruit, which is the next one, and then Two Day Trio. If you guys have not checked out these, these albums, I highly recommend it. I constantly am spinning them uh, in my iTunes library. So. Thank you very much. Very nice. <laughs> And hey man, this is you're like one of my favorite drummers. Do you understand this? So yeah. the fact that you're here is just like blowing my mind. <laughs> I'm doing my best to get through this without <laughs> stuttering and coming off with a to like coming off like a total dork. So you will just sound like me with my accent. So it's fine. <laughs> We're even. Okay. So uh, what I was going to say is this is like I prepare for these ev uh, events with the artists that come in, but I didn't really have to do much preparation. With yours, because I already knew most of this stuff, so okay. it's great. Um, if you, you guys should also follow him. Uh, it's uh, facebook.com slash Benny Greb official. It's yeah. on Twitter, at Benny Greb, Instagram, at Benny Greb, and then youtube.com um, slash Benny Greb official. So keep up with him. He's doing so many cool things with the master sessions, with the Art and Science of Groove DVD launch, um, and with all your different bands that you're playing with. You're a busy guy. Yeah. I like to keep busy. Yeah. <laughs> and so today you're here to talk about some concepts from the art and science of Groove DVD. Right? Yes, exactly. Cool. So before we get into and that... Thanks for having me, by the way. Oh. Right? I mean, I'm happy to be here as well. It's a great, great thing here, great location, great crew. Yeah. So thanks. Yeah. Cool. Um, now, for those of you who don't know about Drumio, we do this sort of thing on Drumio every day. We, we broadcast one live lesson where we log in, it's interactive, it's real time, you can ask questions, you can talk to the community, that sort of thing. If you'd like to give it a try, um, now Benny Greb isn't out every day, although we'd love that, but if, if, if you'd like Me to... Me too, the food was great. <laughs> <laughs> we have an amazing roster of instructors, and so if you'd like to give it a try, just go to drumio.com forward slash trial. It's free for 30 days. You can give it a try, see if you like it, and um, I, I'm sure you'll absolutely love the community. Also, Benny has graciously allowed us to give away one copy of his uh, Art and Science of Groove DVD. Now, later, this will go up on YouTube, and all you need to do to be entered to win is leave a comment on YouTube, and we'll select a winner by the end of June, and we'll post a video announcing the winner of this. And will you be willing to sign this? Of course. Well? We can also do three. Is that technically possible? It's whatever you want. Cool. This we'll is like do three. You know what? I'm, you know, let's do three. Three. Okay. One so, is not enough. So three of you, all you need to do is leave a comment on the YouTube video and you'll instantly be entered to win one of three copies of Benny Greb's Art and Science of Groove DVD, which is, I've watched it. It's fantastic. Thank you. It's, it's like, edu I call it edutainment, right? Because right. It's, such, it's so clever in how you present the material in a way that, that um, it's easy for us to internalize it and make it memorable. Right. right. And so it's funny, it's, it's quirky, it's educational, <laughs> it's, it's very, very cool. That was the main work really on this DVD. How, how can I do this subject justice first of all and then how do I pack it into 
a format that you like to watch, right. although it's sometimes very deep and very intense, but um, that, yeah, so it makes sense and you want to watch it. Cool. Now, there's five different parts to the art and science of Groove, or that's right. how you've kind of broken it down. So today, we'd just like to talk a little bit about those right. five, if that's all right. So Yes. The first one being time, correct? Exactly. Okay. So first of all, the premise of the DVD, and I want to really give you like a crash course of this now, um, since I have the opportunity here, and thanks again for that. Ah. So, um, so I really want to give you a crash course and kind of give you an insight of what the DVD is about, because there are still some myths floating around, and maybe you heard it too from uh, teachers or other musicians or forums or whatever, that people say like, first of all, Technique you can learn and practice, but groove you can't. Or uh, having good time feel is a gift. And you know, <laughs> most of the time, uh, by very modest people who will say, "Well, I just have it," and then that means you don't. <laughs> kind of. So, and I uh, was very frustrated by this early on, and, and um, I took it for granted too, or I took that as truth, uh, till I found out that. Um, I can actually work on these things because when I started playing, uh, my time was bad and I didn't groove. And, and, I, and if it is a gift, I felt like, well, great, I don't, I don't have it. So, uh, so I had to come up with, I, I wasn't born in a big, like, pulsating music city. Mm -hmm. Do you know Eichstetten? Eichstetten. Eichstetten? Eichstetten. No. You can't even pronounce it. See? I can pronounce it. I'm, I'm Eichstetten. Yes. <laughs> so I almost swore. But. <laughs> <laughs> so Eichstetten is not, uh, I mean, I love it there. My parents still live there, hi, um, and, I, and I visit them, and I love it. But um, I couldn't keep up with like interviews of, of colleagues that were like, yeah, my mother was uh, the background singer for James Brown, or, mm -hmm. or uh, my father was a great guitarist and a studio musician. Like, I had none of that, and I, I had to um, kind of learn these things um, myself, and I didn't feel that they were in my genes or in, in whatever. So... And I worked on first the obvious things, which were timing exercises, which where everyone says like a quarter note click is the cure for everything, right? So you practice quarter note click to get your time right, your tempo right. But then I found out, wow, um, certain things do improve and others don't at all. Um, and I have to find different exercises for that. Some of them I want to share with you now. But first an overview over the others. So there were um, other aspects too where I was like, okay, this is not everything. Like having a good time and a good subdivision, that is one part. But um, the flow and the feeling of it and how sound affects all of that and what I can do with my body sometimes, like posture-wise, how I, or what I think about sometimes. So that's when it went really crazy. I found out if I just think of something else or I focus or don't focus on something or parts of the drum kit, it will make the groove sound different. And I tried it out with students at, at the camps and also other students. And I really was able to find out like, wow, if you tell someone, you know what, focus on the subdivision now, sing this in your head and, or a certain pattern of breathing or something through the fills, that it was possible to say like, I record your groove. Okay, now think of this, do that, do this and that, do it again. And after five minutes, the groove sounded completely different. Yeah. without, you know, this is another myth, it's like this takes forever. Yeah. Some of it takes long and I don't want to be like, hey, you know, in five minutes you can't, you have to practice that yeah. stuff, but it's not something that you can't change and it's also not something that will take you 30 years, uh, you can do something about yeah. it. We so, did that, I remember that from your the master session right. in New York, you did that with someone where you brought them up, they played and you said, hey, change a few of these things and it's like, sounded completely different when they played it again and right. it was like five minutes. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. I love that stuff. Yeah. I call them how exercises yeah. because they don't, um, you can do that with a blast beat or with a swing beat yeah. and it doesn't really matter. It's, it's these underlying principles that are there no matter what style you play, no matter what level you play. It's just, um, it's a how subject. So how do you play that stuff? Right. The language of drumming was more vocabulary and what to play kind of phrases and vocabulary building repertoire. Yeah. And the, um, the art and science of groove is a quality thing. So how do you get that quality of groove inside mm -hmm. everything that you play? So, cool. time. One thing that um, I love to do this exercise, uh, which is, um, and you can do it with me now. You thought you'd just sit there and consume? No, no, <laughs> you have to do something now. Oh, wait a second. So, 
Um, do you know the football clave? Do you know the football clave? Football clave? Okay, here we go. The football clave is this. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Oh, you're a classical musician. See? <laughs> so um, now uh, you know that phrase. Some of you maybe laughed and be like, uh -huh, that's so easy. Fine. So you can play that phrase. Great. We have a phrase that you really can play. Mm -hmm. um, now, give me a chit or a click sound. Just, it has to be short, super short. So on the quarter notes, it would be chit, chit, chit. Do it now. Come on. No one will hear you. It doesn't matter. Come on. Do it now. Do it loud. Otherwise, it doesn't work. So, chit. Oh, sorry. That was really loud. <laughs> Very nice. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. Okay. One, two, three, four. Right, without the without the snapping, just a chit. Cool. Now, whatever happens, you continue the chit and you will when I count in, you will continue the chit sound. Very important. And then when I count in, you will add the football clave. Mm. Okay? I'm gonna be embarrassed, now, aren't I? <laughs> you can do it behind the screen so no one will realize. Or you don't have to even do it. Let's, let's just do it okay. with you. So, ready? Chit, 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 do it loud. Chit, 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 two, three, let's go. Chit. All right. How did it go? <laughs> if you like most people, what happens is one of two things. The first is chit, 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 chit. Uh, or the other is chit, 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 chit. Yeah, that's what so, I did. That's what you did. <laughs> so both of these show the following. Um, before you even check out and waste a lot of time with, with playing to the click or trying to synchronize to the click. The first is you have to feel the pulse and feel the quarter note pulse with what you're playing, parallel to what you're playing. So only if you can do that, then you can quantize that and move it to um, on the click. So what we do mostly is we focus so much on the what we play mm -hmm that we forget the how, the pulse. So when we play a fill, we don't even feel the pulse anymore. So then we wonder why we lose the tempo or we lose the subdivision because we worry about the notes that we play and we don't hear that chit anymore. Mm -hmm. So this exercise would be um, chit through playing your drum beats, playing fills, maybe even improvising. It could sound something like this. Chit, chit. Chit, 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 chit. have something to drink with you. Yeah. Now you don't do that with any metronome. You essentially are the right in place of the... It's a different exercise. If you yeah. do it with a metronome, you outsource that and you can have a reminder, someone that tells you every quarter note, right, right, a little too early, a little behind, right. stuff like that. Okay. But this is first of whether you are yourself able to do that despite all the stuff you're playing. Mm -hmm. Very important exercise, right? So the next would be to take a click and and kind of line it up there. And I will tell you, if you've done that chit stuff, it will be much, much better. And it always makes you feel like you sit more on your seat. Right. You sit more on your behind, almost like. It, it gives you a safer... Don't you know that feeling when you play a fill and it feels almost like you like <laughs> you kind of uh, lift off a little bit? It, it, it will make, get you more into that feeling that the groove has, so you do yeah. that. It's not that big of a deal. 
you, like you, you don't get more insecure with fills and hope it will be fine, but right. it's like the same thing. <coughs> and, um, and then you can do that stuff with a metronome mm -hmm. and do it on the quarter notes. So that would be the pulse itself. Then I have exercises on there for tempo, which is the gap click, uh, which we won't do now, but please take a look at it. It's, it's great. Mm -hmm. um, I, I use that one a lot, by yeah. the way. So that, that's very, very helpful. So check out the, the gap click. And you... that's great with like rudiments or with yeah. whatever you practice to do that, because the quarter note click kind of outsources that that driver seat feeling that you have, that right. you really do the tempo. Yeah. But when you have a gap click, which means um, you have a click for a bar and then it is missing for a bar and then it comes back in, you are in the driver seat again. You have to do the tempo. And so that's cool. And the other thing is subdivision. Mm -hmm. So there are people that play nice to a quarter note click, but it still doesn't have one other thing, which is flow. So they target that quarter note, almost like pew, pew. But mm -hmm. in between, there is fluctuation. And because of that, um, there's not this, this feeling of right. but it's more like yeah. So always like this one note is lined up and this is where all your focus goes. But the flow is an evenness, everything in between. Mm -hmm. So that is something that is missing for a lot of people. And it's a different exercise. So again, this DVD is a lot about like how can you really put them into separate things, work on them separately, mm -hmm. and then when you put them together, it will feel very, very differently. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know. Do we have time for one of these? Uh, with the metronome? Yeah. You yes, it would no, be great. Great. So, okay. so one of these is the best exercise I've found to practice subdivision is uh, the moving click. And what I mean by that is... Um, you can do that with only a quarter note click. You don't need any fancy program or anything. You can do that uh, with singing on, on a train station or in the car when you're not driving. But even when you drive, but that's your <laughs> security concern, okay? You have to take care of that. But start the click once. Let's listen to the quarter note click. Okay, so this is your quarter note. The first thing that everyone normally does is this. Which is fine, but if you want to practice subdivision and also, oh, I'll turn it off for a second. Sorry. <laughs> and <laughs> what it also does, it relieves you of making the downbeat yourself, which usually leads to that the, the downbeat gets a little bit weak. Mm -hmm. So that is when, when you work with a band as a producer and you record the band and you have them record to a click. It might sound fine if you take the click away, it sounds a little weak. Mm -hmm. And that comes from that everyone is not doing it themselves, but always kind of, oh, is it? Huh? Always asking for permission every mm -hmm. quarter note, basically subconsciously, oh, is it okay? Is it okay? Yeah. So, and, and you do that with your playing and you practice that. Much better is to practice, or to also do at least, to practice making that downbeat yourself and having the click just be a guiding thing. Uh, almost like a percussion is there. And you do it uh, by placing it somewhere else. So again, quarter note. So, and you try to listen to the click and think of it as the offbeat. It would sound something like this. So you have the click on the eighth note offbeats in that case, and you can do it with sixteenth note offbeats. Yeah. Let's give them a taste of that. So it 
was on the fourth 16th in that case. And this is really great because it puts you back in the driver's seat, gives you the roll back that you have to do a solid, nice, fat pulse. Yeah. But you still have that guiding thing and you are aware at the same time of notes of the subdivision that you may not be so comfortable right. listening to because the fourth 16th or the second 16th Ah, we don't like that that much, yeah. right? So, so this really helps a lot with having a nice, uh, wonderful uh, basis, a wonderful flow of wonderful subdivision, which is a huge part mm -hmm. of time. Cool. And on, on the, the DVD, you actually give some really cool tips to help get into actually, your water's already, <laughs> to help get into actually playing those and, and really good analogies and stuff. But uh, right. we have to move on for now. Uh, next thing we want to talk about is feel. Right. So feel is, um, there is a lot in the time chapter about like playing behind the click, playing a little bit in front, all these things. And normal education about groove and time usually ends there. Mm -hmm. Things that you can do with the metronome and then if that is all there, it should be fine, right? Well, I found that there is much more than that that really changes how we feel and how we... Um, how, how a groove really sounds and what, a, what an impact it has. And also I wanted to answer like what is groove and where do I think it comes from? And I have this whole chapter there where I think it comes from and it's, um, it's not esoteric, but it's, it's really, uh, some people always say like, oh, that's so great that you get into the philosophy. I don't really think it's that, that philosophical. I think it's basically uh, well-researched. But anyway, so check that out. But <laughs> But um, to give you the shortcut here, I think um, an important thing of, of groove is, um, or, or to get this feel, is a certain, uh, a certain phrase. Mm -hmm. So if everything that is life-like or has life has a certain pattern of breathing out, breathing in, like always this exchange of downbeat, upbeat, in and out, this kind of thing that we need to to basically um, have life and have, have um, other creatures that we feel empathy for. Mm -hmm. And we feel empathy for these creatures and that's where this connection comes from. When something really grooves, we almost, it's an outgrowth of empathy almost, mm -hmm. where it's like, wow, ah, oh, because it is something that is So it's almost lifelike and we get connected to that. We are just yeah. wired like that. And mm -hmm. And what we need for that is um, important and unimportant notes. So if you have a click and it does no one wants to move to that or, or uh, um, dance to that or no one feels where a downbeat is. It, mm -hmm. it, you don't have the necessary things for someone to feel this, ah, oh, that grooves, that feels great. So what you need for that is, for example, when you have a click which is da, 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 and then you take away the subdivision and you have da, 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 then slowly you begin to feel how a phrase begins to to come up and and how this feel and and still you won't get a Grammy for that stuff but but it it begins to become a more musical thing and something you can relate to and you can move to and then. There are many other things that you can do to create a nice phrase. And if you think of those, and this is a funny thing because they're all interactive, sometimes a lot of the timing problems get mm -hmm. solved. So you can attack those from all the different uh, subjects and they're all interconnected. So when you change right. one thing, you will change the other as well. So this is another route you can go to just think when you play of of a pendulum going left and right or have vis visualizations like that, like this, or um, breathing in and out and stuff like this where you really have what, which are the downbeat notes, which are the upbeat notes and really feel phrases like that. So do you feel that when you play? Or do you really feel or do you feel or even a longer phrase and you get more air in there and a little bit more of a groove. Now is that like more related to like, I guess it's more of a dynamic thing, but I guess some people would be interested to know, 
Is it the techniques that I'm playing that are causing me to make it sound really, really rigid or? Sometimes, I mean, technique always results in sound. Yeah. And salt, uh, sound is, is a huge part of, of how a groove feels. Mm -hmm. And um, so when you create a phrase, it has to do with dynamics, it has to do with sounds. So that we usually think like, oh, that is the one, or mm -hmm. that is the beginning, or that is a downbeat. So, um, yeah, and it might well be that you have certain techniques that then don't allow you to express that, right? Yeah. But in my experience, there is just so much out on technique and what you can do technique-wise, but not with that angle. It's like, what does it really produce? Right. So you cool. may stumble upon certain technical things, um, especially in the body chapter, yeah. um, and you can work on those. But it's great to have always that in mind, like what is the end result of that? Mm -hmm. Cool, awesome. Okay, so uh, sound. Sound, oh. yeah. So um, for me, I figured out like, okay, I have this feel thing now, but still, when I play a certain groove, um, it can feel totally different um, depending on which sounds I use and how I use those sounds. And why? Of course, because this is the medium that gets across everything that we discuss in the time chapter, in the, in the mind chapter, in the uh, field chapter. So this is where it all gets translated, so to speak. So um, you, it really can even, and a good example is this, you can uh, communicate different styles with how you play certain grooves. Mm -hmm. And without changing the subdivision, without changing how you feel it, just by the sound you play it. And one example is that I call the captain, which is um, there are different captains in different styles of music that really have to be kind of to drive the ship, so to speak. Yeah. And um, listen to the jazz captain for a second. Right, so ride symbol has a huge role here. The other, the other um, instruments are more there to give in to play and they're really not. The point is you can play a jazz tune and, or lead a trio or even a big band through a tune with the ride symbol. And if that is played well, it will be jazz. Yeah. There will be not that much missing. Uh, maybe a little bit of meat and bone and, and stuff. But, but it is like for, for keeping time and for communicating that style, everyone will be like, ah, oh, fine. Mm -hmm. If you just have the snare, for example, very hard, right? Yeah. Like, and, but it's not like that in every style. If you have funk, for example, check this out. Hi-hat and snare drum is the captain here. When you take leave away the bass drum, you hear that it's away, but it doesn't really <coughs> destroy the feel of, of, of the beat. Check this out. You can still be like, dun, 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 dun. you can yeah. still have that feeling. And so, and you can use that by, in rock, for example, it's bass drum and snare, so just as a rule of thumb. And you, this is a tool where you can actually, not by changing what you play or changing or playing different grooves, but just by the sounds that you use and the sound levels that you use, mm -hmm. you can completely create new grooves. Mm -hmm. Although they wouldn't be sometimes watched as new grooves because you don't play anything different. Yeah. And this is a nice thing because we drummers always think like, if we play something in a song, in a band, or at a recording, and someone says like, ah, it's not, I don't know, it's not the right groove for it. We will change what we play most of the time, yeah. not how we play. So we will, we will try to place the snare drum in a, on a different 16th. We will try to get a different figure on the hi-hat. And most of the time it's something else. So here's an example. Um,
So you can make that funk beat sound like a jazz beat. Yeah. You can, and, and it's a great tool to really get hundreds of grooves out of the grooves that you can already play and make them really sound different and feel different. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a wonderful tool. Yeah. I was telling you this morning when we were uh, driving here, uh, I was playing something one time and they wanted to sound more beachy or more like surf, <laughs> surfy. And I, in, the, in that instance, I didn't really, really change uh, what I was playing, but I really had to make the snare a little bit louder, the hi -hats a Definitely. little bit quieter. And, and that's a really, really great tip. Right. Um, okay, we, we want to get to a song, and you actually never told me what song you were going to be playing. Oh, right, right. Here's the reason, because it's a very, it, it's something I never played uh, live or, or uh, in a clinic or in a situation like this. Right. So I always like to put a little bit of pressure on me. So this is, <laughs> this is the world premiere. This is something I, um, I fooled around. I had a little time in a studio once, and I just had, um, had a piano there yeah. and time. So I layered a couple of piano tracks over each other. So everything that you will hear will be piano mm -hmm. and um, from played by yours truly and uh, with a little bit of a sample that I got out of the internet. Awesome. So, um, and, and just one thing, for, uh, if you guys want to ask Benny any questions, we're going to get to questions at the end and there's a submit a question box right below. So for those of you who are watching this live, make sure you get your questions in now. So, wish me luck. Yes, good luck. <laughs> We'll do it live. What does that mean?
was a, it was a good choice of songs since <laughs> this is live. <laughs> We're doing, so, right. what made you want to sample Bill O'Reilly and put his own <laughs> song? <laughs> For for uh, legal reasons, right. that's not Bill O'Reilly. Oh right, right, right. Uh, <laughs> William O'Leary. <laughs> right. It's some Irish guy, I would say. <laughs> that was great, man. Thank so you very much. Is there anywhere for anyone to hear that again if they want to actually like hear the original recording? Um, I will put it up soon. Okay. Maybe so when you watch this on YouTube, um, I will have managed. Probably not. Probably you have to wait a little bit. Right. I will put that out soon. BennyGrabGot.com uh, if you guys want to follow up with any of that. All right, moving on here, we're going to talk about the body. I have to talk now? I'm yeah. a little out of breath. Back okay. to teaching. <laughs> mm. I can tell a joke if you want. <laughs> no, I heard a couple of your jokes. Uh, <laughs> no, Fair actually, they're good. Um, no, so um, body. Here's an exercise. Let me see whether you can see my foot. Mm, can you see my right foot even? Yeah. When I do this? Okay, cool. Or, or if you me, put your left foot on the... Okay. Oh, let me... Oh, God. I'm too short here. Wait a second. Okay. That's fine. So, now, again, something for you at home. Put your foot so your knee is more than 90 degrees angle. So it's really nice on the floor if you don't have a stupid snare stand for standing around here. But, um, so, do that. Your heel stays on the floor and, and you put a lot of pressure so you really hear it, all right? Now, make it faster and trip it. Cool. Now, take your foot and put it back so it's like this. Mm -hmm. Now, when I count in, start again with the triplets. One, two. Three, four, go. <laughs> so, this is a good example of, it's a silly example, but it's a good example of how sometimes things that you are able to do, you can do things, right? You could, could at least do the da, 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 da. But if you have a weird posture or you do something with your body, it can be that things that you can do, mm -hmm. suddenly you can't do them, yeah. right? So if you really just change things in your body, you can enable yourself and get yourself in a much better position yeah. in, in a several ways uh, than, than without thinking about that. And one of my favorite ways is, um, oh, there's so many things I could talk about, but, but the one I wanna pick out here now for you is um, the one of breathing. So what many drummers do, and maybe you can watch my mouth while I do this demonstration, is this. They stop breathing, they hold their breath yeah. when they do the fill. And um, this is quite common, and I'm also guilty of this, but at times, but I got better at it a little. But I would encourage you to get better at this too and just have it conscious and really make an exercise out of it. Because think about it, what happens when you hold your breath? <laughs> Did you ever think about why your fills sometimes get faster? Isn't that a problem that, mm -hmm. that drummers have? And first of all, it's a sign of stress and, and things like that. And how we dig our own graves when we say like, something very difficult comes up. Mm -hmm. So you know what? I will play it even faster to make it <laughs> easier on myself. It's like, it's most, the most horrible idea. Yeah. So, but one reason might be that you hold your breath. And actually I found one of the main reasons, uh, the most common ones. So. Um, if you play a fill and you hold your breath, what your body then thinks is like, eh, we're holding our breath. What happened? Mm -hmm. but why? We playing a fill, that's why? Well, if we hold our breath much longer, we will die. Yeah. So it's an emergency mode, right? So, so it's like, let's get this fill over with, fast. 
So, and this might sound silly, but it's actually what happens. Your body gets into emergency mode whenever you hold your breath. It wants to speed up everything else so you get out of that situation. So, as silly as it may seem, or maybe it's not that silly at all, but play a groove and pick a breathing tempo. That... that's maybe just a fraction slower than you would normally would breathe. Mm -hmm. So it really calms you down. First of all, you get into a very nice relaxed state by doing that. Yeah. You won't believe if you put on a click, maybe an offbeat click, nice and easy from yeah. the timing chapter, and you do, you do that, you, you won't believe how much flow you will get and how, how relaxed you will play that groove. Mm -hmm. When you do that with that breathing, you maybe don't want to play a lot of film. Right? Maybe it's nice just how it is and it's enjoyable. And, but then, when you then play the fill, try to continue that breathing pattern. pattern. So you have... You would be amazed how much that organ uh, automatically puts the fill into the same flow like the groove. Wow! It's yeah. it's one it's a wonderful exercise, and the the reason for it is that your body is your machine. Yeah. Right. You can think about the time stuff. You can think about the feel stuff. You can think and know about uh, the sound stuff. But the machine that you use to execute that all mm -hmm. is your body. Like with the foot ex um, uh, example, um, this has to execute it all. Yeah. By the way, a little bit off topic, but um, when, when we practice, that's why we sometimes feel like we're stupid. Because, because our brain is much faster in being like, oh, I know what this exercise is about. Yeah, sure. Right hand this, left hand this, fine. Yeah. And our body says, wait a second. But we have to do it, you know? Give mm -hmm. us some time to... And then we think, like, oh, it's not that hard. Why, why can't I play this? Well, because it's not your intellect who has to play it. Yeah. Because it, it's already there, right? But your body has to do it. And that needs repetition. That is your machine that, mm -hmm. that takes a while. Muscle memory and coordination takes repetition. Awesome. So to really use that and get those frustration moments out, you have to know how your body works and really use it um, to create, in this case, great grooves. Awesome. There are many other great exercises, yeah. there, but I think we have to move on. I right? was going to say, yeah, we got to move on. Lots of questions uh, to get to, and we have one more point we wanted to talk about the, the mind. Right. Okay. So the mind is one of my favorite things because it's one, uh, I, I really try to emphasize this a lot also in my uh, drum camps because mm -hmm. it's the most underestimated one, maybe. Yeah. And um, it's one of those things as well that where people are amazed with subjects that they think they have to practice forever, that if you just think different, that you will sound different completely or that you will play different stuff. Yeah. We think as drummers that if we want to have more repertoire or play more interesting fills, we have to practice more and get more repertoire and practice. The, and I'm not saying that you don't have to practice, but also try uh, working on your mind because your mind is the architect. We talked about the machine that does it, our medium, right? That, but your mind is the architect that makes musical decisions, that, that uh, guides what you then actually will do. And so here's one simple example. Um, out of experience, I do these drum camps now for a while and I really love it. But when you have 25 people there, like we always have and from 13 different countries. Yeah. So it's, it's like, it's a huge difference between a guy from New Zealand and a guy from Norway and a guy from da 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 da. But we're all drummers and it's great. And then I ask anyone, and it's always the same thing, to say like, come on out, play three bars of groove and play one fill. Mm -hmm. And no matter from which part of the world he is and how old he is or how good or bad he might think he plays, um, there is one thing that will always happen. He will play a three bar groove with a backbeat with the subdivision on the hi-hat and with the downbeat on the bass drum. Yeah. And then when the fill comes, he will use toms, 
and he will end on a crash. Yeah. 99.9% of the time. Almost 100%, I would say. Yeah. Um, and here's the thing. You then would say, I, but I don't have different ideas, right? I don't have enough repertoire. And everybody has enough repertoire. And here's this exercise, or an, just a, an example what the mind then can do. I then say, take a couple of statements that we have and mindsets that we have about fills and just ex, um, exchange the explanation mark that you have at the end of it in your mm -hmm. subconscious with a question mark and change it. So, first one would be, a fill has to incorporate tom-toms. A fill has to incorporate tom-toms? Hmm. And it's good if you have a beard, then right. you can go, hmm. Right. Oh, uh, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't work You wouldn't for me. do that anyway. So, but you can ask yourself that question and you could do this like as well. this. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's also good. Hmm. So you can ask yourself that question and then, hmm, does it really have to use tom-toms? Play again. And that guy will then, and it happened a million of times, will play a fill that he never played before. Yeah. Just by saying, I won't use the tom-toms this time. And I, he, he then does a fill between hi-hat and snare, and it sounds super hip, and it's like, wow. He didn't practice it for a month, he didn't like, like listen to different music even, it was just by thinking differently. Yeah. Right. So that's a great example. Cool. I always make this stupid joke of like, like um, scientists always try to find, find out what this muscle in the back is for. This is, uh, only drummers have it. And they now found out it's the fill muscle. And what it does after three bars, it turns your torso like this. It's weird, <laughs> right? Because we all do like... Uh, right. And a couple of other questions would be like, does a fill have to be something else than a groove? Yeah. A fill can also be another groove from another style. Does a fill have to have more notes than the groove before? Yeah. Right? We always play more notes in the fill. Or um, does a fill um, have to be louder than the groove? Mm -hmm. so, so things like that. And I violated some of those rules in my songs as well. But it's just if you want to play different fills, sometimes a change in mindset go goes a long way a long way and it's the same with grooves. So if you think of mental images like we we talked about before with the pendulum mm -hmm. or certain visualization, visualize, it's a hard word, visualizations, um, you, you can do that and it really helps a lot. Awesome. So maybe let's leave it at that. But yeah, on the DVD there are many really examples like for, cool. of mindset. Awesome, yeah. So if you guys want to see more of the five different topics that you talked about, I have I have the stuff and it's great and for the amount that you spend on this it um, and it, the amount that it can change the way you approach the drum set and all that it's the best bang for your buck that you'll ever get and uh, I really encourage you guys to at least check it out. Um, how about a drum solo? A drum solo? Yes. Great. Okay. Great. And while he's doing this drum solo, if you haven't submitted a question yet, just go ahead. It's the box right below. It says submit a question. Type your question in there. Hit submit, and um, we'll ask uh, him as many questions as we can get to after the solo. Cool. Good luck.
Thank you. Pleasure. I was supposed to like look at the questions and uh, figure out what we were going to ask you, but I didn't really do anything. So That's, that's fine. <laughs> okay, I got one here though. Ryan Turgu says, "Was there a moment that made Hi, Ryan. was there a moment that made you want to make a DVD all about Groove? Or I guess what was the moment that where you said I need to do this? First of all, it was purely selfish. I didn't want to make a DVD. I just wanted to find exercises for myself. Mm -hmm. And then after I did the drum camps, I um, I uh, started to share these ideas with people, and I actually saw that hey." You know what, maybe they not only help me, but they actually also help others. Mm -hmm. And then I tried to um, refine uh, the way I was teaching it, basically, mm -hmm. and tried to find better ways to explain it and better exercises that get to the point faster. And so basically the material I had long before the language of drumming, actually. Really? Yeah, I, I've been working on this for seven years. Huh. So and. Uh, but the last couple of years were there. I, I didn't feel ready back then with mm -hmm. um, um, to do this, to really do this subject justice. So I, I thought I have to refine the way that I'm teaching it, and I really have to field test it basically yeah. with with guinea pig students. Like how can I? How and sometimes things that were not important for me were very important to them, so I included them. Sometimes things that um, were super important for me, they were like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> so I kind of and. So I found ways how to explain it better and, and to, to really field test the way I'm teaching it and, and to, get an, to get it organized. So uh, quite long ago, to yeah. answer it shortly. Cool. Um, uh, this one's from Thais. He says, hey, Benny. Hi. I, uh, I'm considering attending one of your master sessions in Germany. You're very welcome, sir. Uh, so I wanted to know your thoughts about how experienced uh, you should be before going. I get this all the time because maybe I made a mistake in, in calling the master sessions. Mm -hmm. I have a different definition of master and mastering. I think everyone is a master and everyone right. ha wants to master things. It's not a thing that um, I have great, ex the short version would be don't worry and just come by, we'll have a great time. Yeah, and <laughs> it's true, like w when I went to, there was people from six months playing, I think, six or nine months or something, and right. then there's, me and Dave went, and we've been playing for both for 15 plus years, and right. I feel like I got a ton out of it, and I know that the relatively new drummer did as well. Right, um, and it's always the same, same thing, like people are uh, super excited, like the first couple of seconds, yeah. and then that immediately goes away because they find out everyone is, and then yeah. there is no competition, it's, it's really a nice, we, you know, we always eat there together, we spend time there together, it's, it's just a great time. So if you worry and you're excited, you're not the only one, everything will be fine. <laughs> I'm looking forward to meet you. Uh, this one's from Fred, and Fred, Fred's a good friend of Drumio. He says, uh, Benny, Hi, Fred. thanks for being here. Question, when I, when I practice a groove or fill in my drum room, I get to the point where it sounds great, time, feel, everything. Then when I go to a gig situation, it falls apart. My hands feel yeah. like I'm wearing boxing gloves and I, have, and I have no finesse. Any suggestion for translating practice into a live setting? Right, great question. Um, the reason why, it's almost like when we practice stuff and we feel stupid because it doesn't work. Another one of this is that you do something in the practice room and you're actually happy with it. First of all, you have to see whether it's really there or if it's an illusion. I prob probably it is not a, uh, an illusion, but I will tell to everyone else, mm -hmm. make sure that you record your practicing. Okay. Because very often, the how it feels has a very different how it actually sounds. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I had it a lot of times that I've thought like, what? but it was great at the gig yesterday on the tour, right? Yeah. And then when I got a recording, I was like, no, it was very bad there as well. <laughs> and <laughs> I just thought it's great. So that is the first thing you have to find out for uh, all the other parts to work. Is it really good in the practice room? Yeah. So then we are at the next step. If it's really good in the practice room, then and it's not good live, also then again, make it measurable. Make it, is it, do you have a recording or did you just feel bad live? Which sometimes can happen as well, right? You mm -hmm. feel horrible and then you listen to a recording and it's like, you know what, it wasn't that bad, I was just freaking out. So even if you have those, so first of all, make sure that those um, statements are correct. So, and if you're then at the point where you say like, it actually is the case, practice room great, live horrible, then um, it is probably because you don't have enough headroom practiced. What I mean by that is we need psychological headroom when we practice. Um, 
sometimes we have a low standard when we practice, which is we practice things till we can play them. And maybe you think, what is wrong with that? Mm -hmm. But you have to practice things till they feel great. Mm -hmm. And that is really important because when you can play them, it can be that you still need all your focus to execute them. Mm -hmm. You still need everything that you have to make them sound great. And guess what? Life on stage, there is this weird bass player that will look at you and the water that will fall over yeah. and this, this cord on the back that pulls on you and because yeah. you didn't fix it on with gaffer tape. And that is normal. So things will happen that will not be like in your practice room. And it will take away from your focus and your concentration so you have less bandwidth available to execute the things that you practice. So how can you do that in a practice room? You can, for example, sing the bass part. Mm -hmm. You can um, uh, listen to the playback more. You can uh, try to make the, the practice room situations as much as possible with uh, the live situation. And for example, I take things, oh man, that, that is a huge subject. I may take forever now, but, but it's a great subject. So try, uh, just leave it at that, but um, try to um, practice so it's really 140% safe and you can do maybe focus on something else in the meantime. So that, that is the short answer I can give to that. This is an interesting question. I've, we've never had one like this before. So I've okay. Been, it's from Fitz. Is Fitz. it offensive or is it not? Very offensive, yeah. <laughs> okay. So it says, hey, Benny, I just finished the Art and Science DVD today. Thank you, sir. I really liked it. I'm curious to know, what is your own definition of a good drummer? Wow. <sighs> that I like it. Yeah. Next question. No, uh, <laughs> no, it's actually th the truth. I'm, I, I used to um, have a much more elaborate opinion on that, but I found out that uh, it's not, a drummer doesn't have to be very technically uh, great or um, sometimes the time, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. And, and like all the things that I value myself and I try to become better at, there are always cases where someone has a weird combinations and s some weird weaknesses and some weird strengths that I didn't maybe expect or I didn't even see or, or hear before, mm -hmm. but there's just something that grabs me. And of course we could now analyze it and I could tell you then what it is, but, but if I have to give a general, general answer, um, it's very different with, with very different drummers that I really like. So yeah. Um, if, yeah. Cool. I just have to love it. <laughs> and I love very different kinds of drummers, so. Yeah. This one's from Biel's Paul. I, I probably just butchered that name, I'm sorry. <laughs> it says, uh, thanks so much for bringing Benny to Drumio. I wanted to ask Benny what he would suggest a beginner to focus on if he or she wanted to develop and understand groove. And this is kind of one of my questions right. too. For a relatively new drummer who's approaching this sort of topic, they're still just learning the basics or getting right. started. So what would you recommend they kind of focus on? Right. Um, I would find a teacher that has no uh, gatekeepers in his mind. And what I mean by that is sometimes we treat education like there are certain things that you have to do first, like those gatekeepers in, in front of those nightclubs or something yeah. where it's like, hey. Bouncers. You, bouncers is yeah. the right word. Okay, you, you have to do this first. You know, If you don't do this, you can't get in here. So that's what we did with education for many, many years. It's like, wait a second, you want to play music? Well, if you don't want to read notes and notation, sorry, can't go in there. Or mm -hmm. if you don't want to practice stick control for like a decade, sorry, you're, mm -hmm. you're not allowed in here. You can't play music. And I think this is ridiculous and, and harmful. And uh, nothing against stick control. It's a great book. It, it, it gave me a lot. But... Um, um, especially if you want to attack like groove, um, I would uh, start without the drum set. I would, if I have a student that is not very advanced and I don't, I don't teach like single lessons anymore, but right. what I always did was I turn on a song and I let them clap the backbeat and see whether they could do it, right? And then maybe I would like let them do or eighth notes and like, like single 
uh, like simple coordination things, yeah. but always with a certain movement, with a certain beat and a certain time and see whether they still can enjoy it, if it's still there and um, not go completely the other way to say like, oh, I have to check out technique first. So there's a lot you can do with time and groove when you even hold your sticks like that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying that you should keep holding your sticks like that, but I'm just saying like you can uh, isolate certain groove and time exercises a lot from many other things that we think we have to do first and time my basic point is time and groove is not a super advanced subject yeah. it should be actually the first thing and the most basic thing cool okay one more question and then we got to move on for those uh, for those you're wondering we're still going to playing one more song and it's uh, it's a very, very cool song that I'm sure everyone's <laughs> going to want to hear. So make sure you guys stick around. Uh, this is from S Simon, and he says, could you talk about the concept of drunk drumming? Um, <laughs> so, and I, you kind of played a lot of this kind of style, right. especially with the new band Moving Parts. Right. You have a lot of that stuttering stuff. And he mentioned Chris, Dave, and Questlove, right. where you, where you uh, delay or play ahead of parts, uh, like groove on the hi-hats or snare. Right. Like yeah, well, some... Uh, is subdivision based and some is misplaced or misplacement, <laughs> displacement, I would say. <laughs> Maybe even misplacement. Um, but um, so for me, it's like these two things I'm working on basically. So uh, one would be, uh, whoops. So um, we always practice in unison, right? So we try on the pad to really get like the, the strokes to hit at the same time. Well, then on purpose, you try to do something else. You try to almost feel a flam between the right and the left hand and really, really uh, keep that far apart. But at the same time, try to keep the tempo and the subdivision nice on the hi-hat. So maybe something like this. I'll first, I'll first play them together mm -hmm. and then I'll do the uh, misplacement. Okay. did it in the end but that that would be one thing another one is especially when you do it with down and back beats it's it's uh, you know it almost throws you a little bit yeah. one other example would be like And I also went into the other thing, which is subdivision. I changed subdivision. There is an exercise on the art and science of groove that is called handbrake. It's almost that thing where you first think in triplets. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. Go from one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four, and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and yeah. a one triplet, two triplet, three. That's cool. And that kind of gives that feeling of uh, the yeah. gears changing and that kind of stuff. And the last one would be in subdivision to have in betweens. So in between triplet and straight, where you have almost like the New Orleans playing instead of. not really shuffled, not really straight, Cool. these elements. Awesome. Okay, man. Thank you so much. 
Thank you. Great lesson. Are we already done? Oh, oh no. Dude, we're way over time. <laughs> we're way over time. <laughs> okay, so for, for those of you who are interested to hear more about Drumio, I'd love for you guys to check out the trial. You go to drumio.com forward slash trial. You get it free for 30 days. We're actually filming some more stuff with Benny tomorrow that's going to be exclusive to members only, and that's going to come out in the next uh, month or, or two months, something like that. But I really encourage you guys to check it out. Also, Make sure you check out bennygreb.com. You can kind of get connected to everything he's doing there. The Art of Science of Groove DVD or digital download, as well as the Master Sessions camps and all the different projects you got working on. Um, also wanted to mention uh, Sonar, Mino, Promark, and Remo. Uh, I know that they're, they're all... Um, have yep. helped out with, with gear and different things like that. It takes a lot to put something like this on. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and we got we got it all together, I think. Right, <laughs> so, right, yeah. Um, and one final thing. Oh, yes, for the, the contest for the DVD. Like I said, once this is on YouTube, if you are watching this on YouTube, just leave a comment below and you'll instantly be entered to win one of three copies, which will be signed by Benny Greb of his new DVD, The Art and Science of Groove. But uh, that's all I have to say. Thank hey, you again. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching. It was a pleasure being here. Yeah. So now you're going to play Greb for it. Exactly. Okay, and, and uh, let's do it. This uh, you can actually get the drumless version if you guys are interested. Right. On his website, which, which I have, so I'm going to do a video soon. I'm going to commit to it now, so you guys can all expect it. All for, right. <laughs> expect me uh, to actually put it out. But uh, this is a great track. Cool. So thanks. Yeah, it's one of the very first ones I've I've ever done. It's this a cappella thing, and many yeah. maybe know it. So cool. Let's go.
Do 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 do